Welcome to our third and final episode from Menu 12A. And in this episode, we're going to learn about the double helix structure of DNA. And this was discovered by Watson and Crick in 1953. Now, in 1952 and 1953, uh, Watson and Crick were working on uh, their structure of DNA, or looking on the discovery of the structure of DNA. And they, they could smell or feel that they were really, really close, but they just couldn't get it right. Mainly because they thought that it was made up of three strands with the bases pointing to the outside. And they didn't figure out that it was two strands with the bases to the inside until they came across the work from this uh, woman scientist that was happily working at a, in England nearby, and her name was Rosalind Franklin. Now, I want you to look at this model of DNA. All right, this is a pretty standard model of DNA, and notice that it's a double helix. The word double helix means twisted ladder. Now, you notice that these are evenly spaced apart. That's not really how it works in DNA. There's some, a small helix and a, and a larger helix, but this model works pretty simple. All right, now I want you to look at it right here. Now, what Rosalind Franklin was doing is that she was shooting uh, x-rays into the crystals of DNA. And a couple of times, the x-ray would go right down the middle of this molecule, and you would get this picture like you see over here on the left. This is the famous photo 51. And when Watson looked at this, he a, a light bulb went off in his head. He was like, aha, I got it. Now let me explain to you what this picture shows you here. All right. Let's pay attention. Let's use this color. All right. So we got over here. You see this area right here? That represents the sugar phosphate backbone. You're going to learn about this here in just a little bit. And so there's one sugar, phase, sugar phosphate backbone, and then here's one other sugar and phosphate backbone. These guys in the middle represent the base pairs. And since it forms this X, and you see this little black over here, that's some of the other sugar phosphate backbone. So as that thing twists around, you're getting the bases to rotate, and you're going to see that you've got some sugar phosphates here, and you got some sugar phosphates there. So that gives you that little spiral look. And once uh, Watson and Crick saw this picture, they were like, we got it now. So let's meet the famous Watson and Crick. James Watson was an American. Francis Crick was uh, a Brit. So he's from Britain. And they published their famous work in 1953 in a scientific journal that's still around today, and it's still the world's most important scientific journal called Nature. Now, their model was a double helix. Now, remember, double helix means twisted ladder. And if you think like the sides of the ladder that you would hang on as you're climbing up it, that's the sugar phosphate backbone. So it's alternating sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate. And the rungs or the steps of the ladder, those were made out of bases. And those bases were held together by hydrogen bonds. So let's pay attention to this picture in detail. Now what you guys see here is a simplified model of Watson and Crick's double helix structure. And I want you to pay attention to this area here on the left. And this is the sugar phosphate backbone. You got sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate. But I do want you to pay attention to this five prime and this three primed in. Focus down here on the three primed in. The three prime actually refers to the carbon. So what we have here is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, and then there's carbon five. Those are the five carbons on that sugar. But for you guys, let's keep it simple. Remember, three prime, and, and the little tick mark on the three is the prime. Three prime refers to the sugar end of a sugar phosphate backbone. At the other end of the box, backbone, you have the five primed in, and that really refers to the phosphate. So I want you to remember, five prime phosphate. The F sound will make you figure out what that is. Now look over here on the right side of the DNA molecule. Notice that the sugar phosphate backbone is going in an opposite direction. 
At the top half, you've got the 3 primed in, and at the bottom half, you have the 5 primed in. So what we have with DNA is an anti-parallel structure. It's 5 prime to 3 prime going in one direction, and on the other side, it's 5 prime to 3 prime going the other. It's anti-parallel. It's going in different directions. We're focusing on this 5 prime to 3 prime uh, direction of the backbone because that's going to come into play on the next menu when you learn about replication. Now let's focus on the inside of the ladder. In other words, the rungs of the ladder, the steps. Notice that these are the DNA base pairs and they're held together by hydrogen bonds. Now earlier in the previous episode we learned that about Chargolf's rules. A pairs with T and G stand or pairs with C. So remember, always together, good couple. A to T, G to C. And you see here, thymine, which is a pyrimidine, a single ring, is going to pair with a purine, adenine, which is a double ring. Remember, a purine is always going to pair with a pyrimidine. And notice we have an A with a T and a C with a G, and those are going to follow Chargolf's rules. All right? Make sure that you pay attention and you study this picture really well because I guarantee you will have to draw it on a test. So, until the next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side. Kiss one another, die for each other, we're cold for the summer. Take me down into your paradise